Hey, it's Curly, and we're back with more Deer Days. Today, we're going to be using, um, demonic self something, uh, Megala good, uh, the, the snake. The snake, right? Here's the deck list. Let's jump into the fight. Let's actually take a look at the name really quickly. Phantasmic Stealth Fiend Megala Nozuchi. There we go. Uh, and for some reason, I think in Japanese, I think it's just called Genma. Um, I don't know why we got the much larger name. <laughs> but um, yeah, so this is a uh, Dragon Empire deck that's actually a promo that was released in the Bushiroad um, magazine, monthly, weekly, I think it's monthly Bushiroad magazine that, uh, you know, has become notorious for having several different really good promos in them. And one of them, of course, is, you know, the snake here, which you can actually use as a grade 3 vanguard. It doesn't have a ride line to come along with it, but you can actually use the Shoujo Doji ride line, which was released in set 8. And in Deer Days, they uh, bundled them together, which makes a lot of sense. Don't know why we didn't do that in English, but hey, whatever. Um, so I think I will just reveal the one card here, put that one into soul, and I gotta wait for my opponent to read it, then they shuffle, we're gonna go ahead and play Forktail here, oops, put it over here, uh, looks like we're, uh, this could be literally anything, <laughs> to be honest, um, yeah, let's go ahead and put that into soul there. And let's go ahead and swing in here, try and get a little bit of rush. We are eventually getting this in English for set 11 as a box topper, so it's a lot easier to get than what it, you know, it was really released as in Japanese. Uh, that definitely tells me it's at least PBO, because, you know, none of the other Keter decks can really play that. And, you know, as a box hopper, it's a lot easier to get it. I'm really excited for that, especially because it's getting released in set 11, where Shoujo Doji actually gets support. And Shoujo Doji, uh, support for Shoujo Doji is actually also support for Snake, because they're both stealth units. So, pretty hyped for that. Uh, and in general, I've been pretty hyped to play this deck when the uh, DLC was announced. It was one of the decks that I was pretty interested to check out once I saw that it was available. And, you know, I've typically have this history of not looking into decks early on before they're released. Lately, I've not been doing that because I've been streaming it a lot. You know, as soon as the card is released, we'll jump on to CFA, take a look at it, try and build a deck, so on and so forth. Uh, but the decks that I don't do that with, and once I actually try to build them, once they're actually out, you know, and I can actually play against people, it's a lot more fun that way. Um, so, you know, being able to build this was such a like, exhilarating experience just to see this thing that I just... I knew it existed, but I just didn't really bother because, you know, I never thought we were going to get it in English. But, uh, as you can see here, we're definitely playing against uh, PBO. We've lost our Forktail here. Snake is a deck that focuses on stealth named units. It's very similar to Murakumo in Premium and probably V Premium. But basically what you do is you have two skills for the Snake here. Uh, first, um, in main phase, you bind one or as many cards from your soul as you want and put them into your bind zone. And then for the rest of the turn, this snake gets the names, the card names of everything that's in your bind zone. So even if you only bind one card, but you have, you know, 17 cards in your bind zone, uh, you will get all of those names. Um, I think we can... Uh, uh, it's a bit tricky. It's a bit tricky. Let's go ahead and throw this out. And then we'll just take the Vanguard because they have the Twin Drive. Then it has another skill that says you counterblast one, choose two units that are on board, put them into soul. Then from your deck, you can actually call out any two cards with the same card name as your Vanguard. Um, let me just make sure if it's actually Vanguard or if it's uh, on board. Yeah, same name as your Vanguard. So, of course, first you gather up a bunch of units and you get their same name from Bind Zone, and then you can call out those units from your deck, which is really cool, because you can actually call stuff out from the deck, which is really powerful. Everything you call out gets 5k to the end of the turn, which is really dope. And then finally, um, yeah, I guess we'll discard this. You can actually have those units attacked in the back row of your opponent's on grade 3. So it's a very cool and versatile deck. 
Um, I don't think we want to reveal anything because I don't want to lose a persona right. I wish they had a thing where, like, if you did that, you got to, like, you know, uh, draw if you don't use the effect or something like that, but whatever. Uh, so we're going to go and use the stealth dude here to put into our soul. Uh, we're going to put one in the bottom of the deck. We have one already in soul. Um, I would rather put them both in the bottom, so let's put this in for now. Yeah, I think we'll just swing in here. Uh, we just have the early stages here, just trying to set up. You know, got to get our soul ready so that we can put as many cards from our soul into Bind Zone so that we can then copy those names, use them later on. Uh, your main targets are not... There's not too many targets right now, but your main targets to call off from your soul are, for example, the uh, Unprecedented, which is, you know, Shoujo Doji support. Who says, if he's played by a card ability, if your Vanguard is Shoujo Doji, or Shoujo Doji in the name, you can... Or Tamayura, actually. But uh, if you have Shoujo Doji in the name, for the sakes of this deck, you can actually Soul Blast 1 and draw, draw 1. We play the Shoujo Doji Ride Line, so we bind the Grade 2, uh, which then gives us the Shoujo Doji name. So we can actually call this out, and it'll actually get us uh, some card draw, which is really nice, even though we're not actually playing Shoujo Doji. Plus, if you put two or more cards into your soul, two rear guards into your soul this turn, he gets 10k. So he's actually a really good beater. So he's perfect in this deck. Uh, our other beater here is the Shakugan here, Stealth Dragon, which just gets 5k if you attack into a Grade 3 or Greater Vanguard. Um, or we actually just unit. So he's just a decent attacker here. When you call him out, uh, he gets a plus 5k from Snake. Uh, and if you attack with, you know, a unit that's greater or greater, he becomes full 20k, which is decent. Uh, which just lets you have nice little attacks from the back row. Um, so I think what we're gonna do here is we're gonna drop this. I guess we could have two to pass this. Uh, but we can... Maybe that would have been better. Yeah, it probably would have been better to two to pass this. Even though they could have broken through it. Because uh, you're not going to get the 10k. I thought they were going to get the 10k. But I think that's only when I am on grade 3. So that's that's a bit of a misplay there. But. Uh, those are your main targets from pulling up the soul. You know this for the draw uh, and the power. And this also from the draw and the power. And you just want to fill up your board with things that can attack your opponent. Six times. Try and win the game. Right? Uh, you have a, some cool little tech options. Or not tech options. But cool little mechanics that you can make use of. Like the fact that this guy that we just used here, the uh, Sugamuki, uh, you can Soul Blast 1. Uh, we're just going to have to take this. You can Soul Blast 1 and... Uh, yeah, we're dead. That's what I got for... <laughs> well, we'll see. Um, you can Soul Blast 1 card, put 1 card from your drop into Soul, so this lets you recycle some cards that you either discarded early on, like I did with the Great 3, or just reuse some cards. Yeah, we're dead. Uh, 4 damage, let's go. Uh, and unless I hit a defensive <laughs> or three, uh, I can't guard this thing. So we're, we're dead before I even get to show up what the deck does. Let's go! Okay, we hit a draw trigger. Uh, that helps. That puts us at 20. And we get this, which puts us at 35. So we need ideally one more trigger there. Uh, at least they didn't hit a heal trigger because that would have kind of set us back hugely if they pushed us to five while they're at like two. But we're just going to hit all of our triggers as well, which means we have a couple of blank checks coming up, which is a bit unfortunate. Hopefully the next one is not a critical, so we can actually check that against our opponent, and ideally like a heal or a draw, if anything. Alright, well, that's fine. We don't need any critical triggers to win this game. It's actually the worst trigger in the game anyways. Why would you want to do two more damage that limits the amount of attacks you can do in a turn? Like the fact that he, or sorry, they just got... The crits now this card can't attack uh it has the does it have twin drive or drive it doesn't have any because they don't have the um um the, i don't know i don't know her name but the girl uh the promo girl she's really strange hard to pronounce name um yeah we're gonna have to discard i guess this here to finally go into our vanguard here uh, we're in a pretty rough spot, not gonna lie, not gonna lie. Uh, so first off, let's go ahead and use this skill here. We're gonna bind Shoujo Doji, Unprecedented, and the Shakugan here. Put those into our bind zone. We also didn't get a lot of good hits from our ride line. So in general, this has been a pretty rough match. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and use the uh, Vulcan here to put this on the bottom of our deck. Uh, this is not a stealth card, it was actually released in set 8, but it is pretty cool because it lets you just put anything uh, from your drop that has the same name as one of your units uh, to the bottom of your deck. So let's just recycle one of your cards and it also lets you um, get 5k, so if you ever need him as a booster it's pretty good. But typically, he ends up just going into soul here, and then getting soul blasted, so he just gets used and abused, because he doesn't have the stealth name, so I can't do much with him. Uh, we're going to have to call out the Unprecedented here to try and get some card draw here. We're going to call out the Shokokan here as well. Technically, we could attack from the back row. If I can maybe use this to draw into something, uh, we can, yeah, like I said, we can soul blast out. A little Molten Lava dude in order to draw ourselves another critical trigger. We definitely don't have any left at this rate, because that's six. <laughs> right, and I only play like eight or seven, right? So, no danger of our opponent getting critted here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and swing in here. For a good 20k, they can't just intercept. They have to add a little bit more if they want to guard this. Fortunately, we of course only have three attacks due to the fact that uh, we drew into a bunch of crits. <laughs> so, this is a very weird match. Um, they're actually going to guard this with the critical trigger and also the blaster oh. dark. Just to get that into drop. Technically, if I was actually playing Soldier Doge, I could have bombed this uh, Blaster Dark and put it at the bottom of the deck. But I'm not. <laughs> so they actually have no danger of that happening. Which is a bit strange that they included that. But hey, that's fine. It is in drop now, so I don't have to worry about it at all. Um, but it could have been an extra intercept. Uh, you could have just wanted to pass me here, for example. But, you know. Um, but yeah, that's the basis of Snake. It is a sort of complicated deck to be honest, because there is a lot of room for like misplay, it's a bit more, um, this is a no to pass, it's not as like simple and easy to just pick up, right, because there's a lot of moving pieces, you gotta make sure you sequence things correctly. Uh, we're actually looking pretty decent for next turn, we got a very defensive hand, uh, I don't know if it's gonna be enough, but we'll see depending on whether or not they persona right here. And we sh I'm presuming they're gonna take this unless they want to use more cards in hand, which hey, I'm all for that. But uh, they're gonna go into their turn here with just the one counter boss. Yeah. But yeah, it's a deck that I had to actually practice myself a lot. Of course, I've never actually played it, but early on, I just had a lot of like misplays and. Uh, once you get into the swing of thing, it's a lot easier because you just have to remember, you know, what names you actually have, make sure you do the order of things correctly. They have no Persona Ride, which is good for us. And also, it's not like super strong right now. Um, I think during this time in set 8, the deck was like, you know, solid. Um, in, in speaking like in terms of when it was released in Japan, because of course we don't have it in English, I think it was pretty solid. Um,. People, I think, thought it was, like, it was like really good as well, but I think that was more of like a surprise factor because it was a brand new deck. Uh, I think it is really solid, you know, six attacks. Uh, it has decent card draw. It has really good deck thinning. Uh, I say all these things as I haven't been able to show off most of that stuff, but I, I think it is a pretty good deck. They're going to throw out a bunch of triggers here for some reason. I know they have to retire, but this counts as two. So I'm not really sure what's going on here, but uh, we're just going to... This is just 18, no? Um, as much as I don't want to do this, we're going to do that. Never play down these 4k triggers because it does not matter. It legitimately does not matter. It might matter if your opponent is a lower grade than you. Because uh, then the power might actually matter. But uh, in this case, don't matter. I, I can take this and guard everything else perhaps. Uh, and also turn off their heals. Yeah, let's do that. Let's take this. So we can turn off their chances to heal so we don't have to play from, you know, so behind. And uh, we should realistically be able to guard the last two remaining attacks, considering we have two PGs, right? So they're gonna go in. They do have the possibility of getting... Uh, they could get Twin Drive, but they will have the possibility of getting just Drive checks with their Blaster Dark here. Uh, so we do have to be careful for that, because this is the card that I was talking about. The Knight of Severity, Cleo... Honestly, not to be rude, but I, in my head I just say like Clitoris or something like that, because like, or like Chlamydia, because I can't pronounce what that is, and those are the only words that come to mind. Uh, but that gives, uh, whenever she's retired, if you have a Blaster Vanguard, she cards it's two. And then if she is retired, you give this guy the ability to discard and um, actually get the drive checks. 
Um, so we're going to go ahead and PG this. No point in doing that. Uh, let, sorry, letting that try and go through. We're going to describe the heal that I believe they know about. And just perfect guard that. As, uh... Okay, they actually hit it. <laughs> so many times I've seen people use this character and he does this like crazy voice line for his drive check. And it's usually just dry checks, like he just doesn't get anything. <laughs> That's usually what I'm used to seeing, he's just going and getting nothing. Um, we're going to be able to guard that. So this is actually 35. Uh, we're not going to take the chance here, we're just going to PG it. Uh, it's going to be two cards minimum to guard, so we might as well just perfect guard it, right? Uh, they're thinking here if they're going to discard, which they do. Let's see what they discard. They actually discard the Persona Ride. Uh, I wonder if they think that's because this is the end of the game? I mean, it could have been, but... I don't know, buddy. <laughs> could have maybe played a little bit more resourceful there, but alright. They actually do have the Twin Drive. Thanks to this getting itself Twin Drive, and then the uh, girl whose name I keep calling STDs and other things. Um, gives them the ability to drive check. So they have a draw, something else, and a PG in hand as well as a crit. So they have a rather defensive hand. We do not really have a lot going for us here. I have to top deck Persona and then top deck into something good after that. Uh, ideally the little line guy that's in my damage zone, which uh, we're not going to get. So this is kind of rough here. Uh, so all right, let's go ahead and use a skill. Um, we already have a precedent in there, so we'll just do this. We're just gonna go ahead and bind. Um, what was your name again? Asugi Migu. Uh, we're gonna use this here to put something back. I don't even know what. Uh, we can use Unprecedented, I guess, again. All right, put him in the bottom of the deck so we can call him out again. It's the only hope we have here, and we're gonna have to throw down one of our critical triggers. In order to use the skill here, um, to actually put two rears into a soul. Uh, you can use the skill of the, um, uh, Shoujo Doji, Great Two, to call himself out from the Bind Zone. I decided not to play any more copies of that, uh, but that is something that you can do from time to time. You can also bind, uh, the Grade 1, which I could have done here, uh, and Soul Blast it out. Uh, because you can call them off of Bind Zone. It's just you lose the name, but, you know, that's kind of what you use the Grade 1 for, if anything. So I can actually use this to attack from the back row. Um, so let's go ahead and move this back. And... Uh, it's not gonna matter, unless I had to trigger. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, I should call this... I mean, I didn't know I was gonna draw into it, so... It's not my fault, but... Um, we'll go ahead and Soul Blast this out. And, uh, put in, god, what does it matter? <laughs> um, so what we can do here is, uh, pray that we hit a trigger so we can put it here and get, you know, four attacks. What we'll try to do here is go with the Vanguard first, force out a PG that I normally have in hand, because they don't want to, you know, take a random crit that I don't have left in deck. I technically still have, you know, Overture, so that's the thing. Uh, but they only have four cards in hand, so if I can hit just one trick, we might be able to pull through. Um, if I had that earlier, that would have been great. There we go. Got the draw trigger, which is very good. So we're going to put that power here. Uh, this guy is the guy that I was talking about, that if I drew him for a turn, it would have been nice, because he can uh, counter blast one, play him from hand, call something out from your bind zone, and typically what you do is um, you copy Shodoji's name with Snake's first skill, and then you call out the unprecedented that you have bound, so you can draw a card. But we can't really do that right now. Uh, so these 12 attacks are 20. Let's go ahead and swing in here. Um, I know they have a critical trigger and a draw trigger in hand. Uh, so there's your draw trigger. And uh, they only have 4 damage, of course. They need 1 counter blast for the twin drive. They don't really have to do that. Um, so let's see. They still have the critical trigger here. Go. I could not give them the counter blast. I mean, they're not going to die this turn. It's not huge, to be honest. It it turns off like 
minor amount of their play, and since I discarded the um, Persona Ride, this isn't going to end the game, so there's no real point, I think, in pushing them to 5 right now, even though, of course, with this deck, you want to be at 5, your point to be at 5. I've been at 5 all game, it hasn't been helping me. But I think it's better off to just swing into rear here so they can't attack with it. Because if I push them to 5, they just have the opportunity to use the Counter Blast, uh, maybe hit a draw trigger. They're actually going to defend it with their whole hand. Uh, okay. Interesting. Um, so that makes them use their whole hand. It, it would have been the same result, I guess, if I attacked in it, except now they don't have Counter Blast. Uh, they're definitely going to retire something. So, yeah, I really wish I knew I was going to draw to this great troop. As they top deck into Persona Ride, that's the worst possible option. Otherwise, I would have been okay, I think. But definitely not anymore. Uh, I would, yeah, I wish I knew I was going to draw into this guy. Otherwise, I could have played this in the back row, put this in the front, so I can intercept for both of them, try and get some value out of that. But that ain't going to be the case. Uh, let's go ahead and use this here. And use this fella here. Um, and I don't know what I can do here. I have to just take this, I guess, because this is this kills me, right? So this 25, even though I can guard it, we're just going to have to take it here. There's not really much that I can do about that. Uh, and hope that I hit the over trigger, ideally, or a heal trigger. Yeah! <laughs> Oh man, alright, that's that's pretty solid there. Uh, we still are in a bad spot. Because this is 33 here. Uh, after the skill, you uh, can guard with like a 1 to pass. Blaster Dark comes out with 25. So if I do a 1 to pass, I can do a. Yeah, and then try and guard a 1 to pass for the Blaster Dark. Because um, they can still do drive checks. They can just only do one if they discard a card. So here they can't get the power to... Oh no, this is 35. That's right. I forgot to take into account. The Persona Ride. Um, so never mind. We just have to take Blaster Dark, if anything. Because um, I can do this, which is a one to pass. Because again, this doesn't matter. If this was 5k, it would matter. But since it's not, it does not matter. Uh, if I add two more cards, it becomes 38. So... Yeah, I guess. Because I can't guard this with a 1 to pass. Or could I? I would have gone up to 33, so no. So he has to dry check, and then I have to hit another heal or OT. Or they can just hit a heal. Well, that doesn't actually matter. Heal's off, because <laughs> I'm at 5. Uh, they put the power here, which does not matter. Because I have nothing to guard anyways, right? Okay. So now we just have to hit another heal. Uh, of which I know we have one in drop, one in damage here, two in, d in drop. So we have one heal left and the over trigger. And uh, they're gonna decide whether or not they're going to discard for the twin drive here. Or just the drive, I should say. So, yeah, so we just have to take this, hope we hit one of those last two triggers. You know, it's 2 and 15th chance. And also hope they don't hit a crit, which they don't. So let's see how this goes. Pretty sure we would have won the game there, because they only had the heal and the blasted dark at the end, but hey, that's just how it be. That was rough. Uh, but alright, let's just go take a look at the deck. Well. So, here's the deck. Uh, we saw just about all of it in that match there. Uh, it is rather simple. You know, three copies of Persona Ride. Our ride deck is the Shoujo Doji line, because we can... Uh, bind some self units get them into soul to use later on with our vanguard here which lets us you know bind from soul to steal their name and then we can counter blast one put two years into soul to call out anything with the same name as our vanguard from uh deck two of them and then if we our opponent's greater or greater uh any of our units with the same name as our vanguard can attack from the back row we want to bind the shoujo doji here to steal his name you can play more copies of this if you'd like i've opted instead to play four copies of the vulcan golem i might put this down to one less i don't know uh the vulcan golem is really helpful because on place you put any normal unit with the same name as any of your units to the bottom of your deck uh from drop to the bottom of your deck to get 5k so it just lets you recycle your units like the uh unprecedented here who if you have a shoujo doji or tomorrow you're a vanguard which you can easily copy the name of shoujo doji uh on place by a card ability you can solve last one to draw a card and then it gets 10k if um i think specifically two yeah two or more cards were put into your soul uh from rear guard circle this turn he gets 10k um 
You can call him out, of course, with the snake skill, or you can also use the uh, Coleman here, who says on place from a hand, counter blast one, do some shoulder logy stuff, which we can't do. Otherwise, uh, you choose one unit with stealth in its card name um, from your bind zone with grade less than or equal to your vanguard, and call it. Uh, which is by an ability so you can use this but you have to make sure you do this skill after you copy the name otherwise you just don't get to draw uh, our other main piece here is the uh shaku gun here who just gets 5k when it's x grade 3 or greater there is a grade 2 that actually gets 10k when it's like called by like the vanguard ability but it's 9k base i tried that out for a bit it has decent power but this is just a lot more reliable uh, we have here three copies of the uh, Sugimugi, who you can just use similar to the Vulcan, but instead this is you Soul Blast 1, put a card from Drop into Soul. So this just lets you um, bind something. He's not as useful, but he's a stealth name, so we play as many as him as I seem fit. And then finally, uh, we got ourselves the Forktail, who just says on place, look at the top seven, choose one card with stealth, put it into your soul, and then shuffle. Uh, I think it's stealth or glitter, but you know, we're not playing any glitter. Uh, we're playing four draw because we kind of want to try and see pieces. You can change this out to fronts or something like that because you draw okay. <laughs> Thanks to the unprecedented, but you can definitely draw more. Uh, you can put an extra crit if you'd like as well. Um, and then we're playing here the uh, Gratis Gradle from set 8 because it just enables Persona Ride. We don't play any orders, so it's pretty easy to fit this in. Uh, Persona Riding is nice because your snake hits like a wet noodle. Uh, he literally has no arms, so he's not going to be hitting a lot. He only hits for 13, so he relies on the rear guards. So this helps him hit a lot better, especially since some of your rear guards are puny like this guy that can't get any power. Having this is nice, but then it just doesn't have any power once you call it off the deck. Um, so this is basically the typical deck. You, I've made a couple of arrangements where I think typically it's like three of this uh, and three of this and they play like sometimes max copies of this. So you can mess around with that as much as you'd like. Um, but yeah, that's the deck. All right, we got another game here. Let's go ahead and um, see what we can do this time around. The mulligan is kind of interesting because you want to try and, uh, of course, put stuff that you want to call out from your soul back into your deck. So we're actually going to put in the Shogun here, and we're actually going to get uh, Shokagon here. Uh, we're actually going to double fork tail, which is kind of nice. Um, let's see, we got two of the Vulcan here. Uh, I think we'll discard this, go in to the uh, Great One Shoujo Doji here. We're going to use the skill here to look at the top five. We're going to whiff completely and just pass turn on that. Really do wish. Otherwise, you know, when you do get stuff, it is a nice plus from the Shoujo Doji skill, but I wish it let you like draw one or something like that. Do something or like call itself out, even though I don't really want to do that. I wish it had some kind of like pity or uh, <laughs> some kind of thing like that, but oh well. Um, I think we will just take this first attack here. Okay, thankfully it's just a PG. Once again, playing some different uh, Keter deck that might just end up being the same one as last time because you know you can play this in uh, PBL as well. Uh, we're gonna lose the line, which is a bit unfortunate. Well, that's just how things be sometimes. Uh, we're gonna discard the unprecedented to try and put him back into the deck with the Vulcans that we have, and then use the skill to grade two Shudoji here, who actually lets us reveal stealth. Um, but one into soul and then call out the other one, which is kind of nice. This is only on place from a hand, so we're not gonna do that. We're going to reveal these two guys, um, whereas the first one, you bind one, put one into soul. So, um, I don't think I can call out, um, call the remaining to rearguard circle. So I can call out a grade three, is that what you're saying? Uh, let's do this for science, see if this works. Oh, it does work. I can just get a fuck, bro, he's on grade one. <laughs> All right, cool. I just, I just never been able to hit him. So I didn't know that that was possible. And that is uh, hella dope. Okay, let's just rock this man <laughs> real quick. <laughs> See if we can uh, get some aggression here. Uh, we're going to, um, I guess, put in Forktail, get some deck thinning here. And let's go ahead and do that again. Um, let's look at the top seven here. See if we can hit something that we want in Soul. Uh, we don't have an unprecedented in, in Soul. So I guess we can put one in so we can bind it later. Uh, this, is this grade 3? Uh, it's not. Wow. So I can technically use this now. Put it back unprecedented. No? Yep. Wow. 
Wow. Uh, Sword of Village is pretty cool. I, I want to do eventually a list on him, too. Because uh, he can do some pretty crazy rush. Uh, and he's a... I feel like a very big sleeper deck that a lot of people just don't pay attention to. But I think he's pretty solid. Uh, especially with him getting support in set 11. Uh, I think the problem, at least... You know, if you look at the Japanese side of things, is that everyone takes a look at the fact that Japan isn't playing Shoujo Doji instead of playing Snake. So they have a higher opinion on Snake than they do on Shoujo Doji. Uh, but I won't say they're similar, but I would say, you know, Shoujo Doji is pretty good. Part of the reason Snake is good is because of the Shoujo Doji parts, right? Um, so this, if this is Blaster, we're going to be in a really, of a rough spot here. Uh, Blaster Dark, I should say, because of the fact that they can retire, you know, one of our cards. If they retire the Unprecedented, which I feel like is the target. Uh, no, it's actually MLB. Uh, but they can still play Blaster Dark in the ride line, even though you typically don't want to do that. But the uh, Blaster Blade can retire. But yeah, typically I think they'll go for Unprecedented, which is that, you know, fine. Because I have the, all these Vulcans that I can actually put them back with. So yeah, we actually opened up pretty good for once, which is really nice. Uh, we only managed to push them to two, but... We did force them to guard here. They're going to go ahead and retire the unprecedented, draw one, I believe, or is it only if you don't retire? It's only if you don't retire. Wow. Damn, bless you. But you can let us draw one anyways. Whatever. Um, they are going to look at the top five or seven to get the blaster blade to hand. Uh, so they can retire a bunch of our stuff, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, I'm going to use the drilling angel here, okay, to put back the blaster dark. I guess they discarded that for ride. Um, if they did, that's an, <laughs> that's an interesting play, but alright. Sure thing. So they're going to go ahead and attack here. Um, I need to discard for Ride. So I think we'll just take this. Hope we hit a draw trigger or something. So that we can try and want to pass this. <laughs> Love it. Love to see it. Unfortunately, we do into a critical trigger, which is fine. It's actually fine if I drew a critical trigger. Uh, so it's just going to be 18. We'll give them the one to pass. If they check to crit, they get it. Like... The hell am I gonna do about that, right? Actually, not nah, I lied. Screw you. Um, <laughs> they're playing MLB. I don't, don't want to take damage early. Fuck that. Yeah. You almost had me. You almost had me. But not today. That is enough, right? Yeah, not today. I was like, oh wait, does it even matter? Not today. All right, so that's pretty good. Uh, so we have two counter blasts. So if we do get the, uh, I just call him Komasan from <laughs> freaking um. Uh, what is it called? Um, Yokai Watch. But let's go ahead and play uh, Snake here. Uh, let's I guess use the first skill real quick. Bind Shoujo Doji. Bind the Grade One while we're at it too, and bind and bind. Uh, maybe I could have done a little bit less. I'm gonna have no soul after the Unprecedented, but that's fine. Bind everybody. Uh, let's go ahead and use this here and put back. And unprecedented. Uh, we'll leave the boosted one. And let's go ahead and use our skill here to put in this fork tail. And a booster is kind of nice. Um, so I guess let's put back the other fork tail to soul. At least now we have some soul. So it's fine. It's all fine. So we can call out, I think, two unprecedented, right? Yeah. Which can get retired. I don't have any more Vulcans. Uh, I have one maybe after this. So that kind of sucks. But it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Just go all in. That's all that matters. We're gonna draw into. Ooh, very nice. Uh, we can actually get out this unprecedented, which is nice. But um, ooh, we got the fork tail as well. I think we might as well play that. Uh, go very aggro here, which is you know what this deck can do. I just, of course, not really get to <laughs> do any of that last game. Um, let's go ahead and check. I don't think I have a. I, I do have a short program. Okay. And do I have the... No, I don't. Okay. So yeah, we can add this. So we can bind that next turn and get his name as well. And uh, yeah. Let's just uh, swing at your grade 2 with my giant 36k. <laughs> or maybe... Uh, maybe let's do this. 21. <clears throat> I've been messing up my... Or not messing up. Messing around with my attack patterns. Uh, seeing if people will like not guard and so I can... You know, try and heal and stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and put the, it doesn't really matter. It's both huge attacks. Let's go ahead and heal here. And if we get a crit, that would just be so huge. Alright, we'll get the Persona right, which is decent. Uh, which I'll use next turn. Um, specifically the Persona right card to get a little bit of extra soul. 
Just because I did go a little bit ham this turn, I don't have the most zone. Well, they're gonna hit the critical trigger, which is good for them, because, uh, good for me, actually. Because I don't have to worry about them checking that. Because <laughs> uh, I think that was like their third one. Oh no. Okay, yeah. It's only their second. Okay. Thought they had used up more. This still swings in for a 36. Even if you throw down a trigger, it's, you have to throw in, like, um, this dude as well. And the other one is even bigger, because he's 46. They're gonna have to draw trigger, they're still gonna be in the same spot. Where if they play a, a trigger to guard, um, it's not gonna be enough. They have to play a little, little bit extra, so we're gonna be able to push them to 5 here. They are playing MLB, so they can get the triple drive next turn. They're gonna throw down double triggers, and I can push to 5 here. Um, you know, so they can get the triple drive, they can retire on, on our unprecedented. Which, they might change their mind, because I did put it back and call it out, so they might be like, mm, maybe I shouldn't do that, but we'll see. Uh, but they can retire and get the triple drive and heal, so we'll see how this goes. They're going to play the Emmeline, who is kind of scary. Does this give all Grade twos boosts? Yeah, okay. Uh, you're going to make Emmeline a booster. Okay, interesting. They're going to Soul Blast here, look at the top five. Hope and Prage that they hit, presumably the Blaster Dark of all targets. Uh, but unfortunately, they're gonna call out the MLB. Wah, 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 and they only have the Blaster Blade. Not the Blaster um, Dark, so not Triple Drive. They are gonna retire the Unprecedented, which is a bit unfortunate, but that's fine. We can uh, put that into Soul, bind it, do some shenanigans. Uh, now that we've got the uh, Sugamugi in Soul, they're gonna go ahead and swing in here for 23 to our rear guard. Um, do I want them? They're gonna end up retiring it anyways, but I would rather them retire on president than my back row, just so that I can use it. So let's go ahead and protect it, waste one of their attacks, because they're gonna end up losing a card to retire this anyways. So I feel like that's a little bit of a better option here. I think we just take this, um, even if they check two crits. Yeah, because I can at most do like a one to pass here. Um, they can very easily break through it, um, which would make this a waste. But I can't guard this attack anyways, because this is going to be 30. Um, so I can just try and guard here and get punished for it. <laughs> is essentially what I'm saying here. Yep. Uh, but at least this forces them to put the power here. Um, which means this is only going to be 30, uh, which doesn't really mean a huge amount, to be honest. <laughs> uh, we're going to take three here, which is a bit unfortunate, but that is kind of to be expected. It is MLB, that's why they don't want to take the damage early. Or we could just get the over trigger and say, never mind. <laughs> I'm not taking any damage from Emmeline. So we're just gonna go to three here, which you know puts us out of heal range, uh, which is a little tragic, but it's okay. We're gonna use a skill here for. I mean, I guess they can call out Blaster Blade to retire again. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know if there's any point in that, but all right. Like I guess they could use the next turn, and they don't. They already have one. Okay, that, yeah, fine. Uh, not not gonna care about that. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and bind this. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and... Um, I think we can multi-attack here. So we're gonna go ahead and counter blast... Mm, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do that first. We're gonna counter blast one, take this and this, put it into soul. Uh, we have one last unprecedented that we can call out, and yeah, we can call out the Shukakon uh, here. We'll call these to the back row for now. And uh, we'll use the unprecedented here. We'll so blast out the Vulcan Golem. Draw one card. It's gonna be a draw trigger, which is fine. Uh, so we can call out another unprecedented here. Uh, move this up. Yeah, I feel like that's the right play. Let's go ahead and put this here. And counter blast one. 
and call out one more unprecedented. Use the skill here to Soul Blast, draw a card. I probably should have just called it over here, um, which kind of sucks, but uh, it's fine. So what I want to do is I want to get multi-attack here. Um, so I could have probably set up my board a little bit better, but I think this isn't half bad. So let's go ahead and swing in here. Uh, we'll swing in here, force out a PG because they are at four. Uh, I don't think I have that many crits that I've like taken out of the deck, so we'll bait out the PG here. We don't have over trigger, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, we're only gonna have three cards, so if I hit a trigger here, it's gonna be kind of huge because uh, we have ourselves four attacks that we can swing in with. All right, so unfortunately, no trigger. If they don't hit a trigger. Uh, it'll be kind of huge. MLB is kind of annoying because this guy's 15, right? But thankfully, our Shokokan is here. Actually hit 15, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, they can just intercept or throw out a critical trigger from hand that has 10k more shield than necessary. Uh, Alright. Sure. Who am I to tell you how to play your MLB, right? Uh, they're going to take this one here. We're in a bit of a rough spot. We don't have the best defenses for next turn, so... <sighs> that's the worst possible trigger they could have checked there. Next to the over trigger, but that's alright. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh... Oh, I'm an idiot. I see, see, this is what I mean by misplaying. So I took out the Unprecedented from Soul, uh, which means now uh, he doesn't have the same name on board. There's no Unprecedented from Bind, I mean. Uh, which means this one can attack from the back row, so I fucked up. Um, I should have called- I should move this up, call this here, and call the, the uh, Shokokan back here. <clears throat> well, they did lose the Blast of Dark at that exchange, at least. So there's that. Yeah, that's a huge misplay. Uh, I, I might have been able to win, considering. But, uh, they don't get the Persona Ride, which is nice. They're just going to go straight into battle, no Blaster Dark either. They're going to swing into the Unprecedented here. Uh, I don't think I want to bother losing the Shield Valley. Because um, I have to throw everything at this guy. So they can take that. They're going to retire most of my board with that. Um, <clears throat> but we'll see how this goes. Because uh, they're going to be able to retire again. So they're probably going to hit my other Unprecedented. Which is fine, because they're kind of useless now. Because uh, I think I have all of them in drop. So unless I top deck the Vulcan. Uh, and not even, I need to use this guy first, right? So it doesn't matter. That's that's bait. <laughs> he fell for my bait. All right, uh, let's go ahead and use this. We can, uh, uh, I don't want to discard this, be honest. Or this, I guess we can do, uh, let's do this. Let's be safe about it. Because this can be humongous with like a crit or something. So let's not even take that chance. Um, I'm gonna check an Emmeline to hand, all right. And finally, just the Persona Ride Cup, all right. So that's nothing. And they might go ahead and try and swing in to our um, rear instead, but we'll see. Uh, they're actually gonna call out both here, so they can. Uh, be extra expensive, use the Counter Blast here, retire one of my Shokogans here. And then try and swing in, I guess. Um, this is gonna get another plus power, which is really annoying. So I think we'll guard and then take the Emmeline. Deck is kind of small here, so we have a good chance of ending this with some triggers. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and guard here. So it's a good thing I kept this, because I at least have the two back row and whatever I call out. So I should have at least five attacks here. Um, and they are still at five damage, which is also very good. And uh, yeah, you can go ahead and have this attack here. Which is a critical trigger, unfortunately. I mean, we would have ended up drawing that, so it's whatever. So we'll take that. And all right. Let's go ahead and, um, Persona Ride. No need to use the cup, per se. Um, so we'll just use the unit. I guess I could have called it out, could have attacked from the back row, so there's that. 
Uh, let's go ahead and use the skill here. We'll bind, I guess. I don't know if I have Forktail already there. Not that I really... <laughs> Honestly, matters. I don't have Forktail. Yeah, so whatever. In case we just have no targets, we'll hit Forktail. Put that there. There we go. We're actually going to call down the draw trigger here. And use it for the cost here to put back these two guys into Soul. Unless I put back, they've never been in Soul. It's their first time in Soul. Uh, yeah, that's what I figured. I have nothing that I can call out. Um... So we can, um, it doesn't really matter where I put it, to be honest. Uh, let's do this. This is going to attack from the back row. Uh, let's move this up. Let's move this up. And uh, we're going to play a heal here. Because we're just going all in. We can call out the Shoujo Doji. And lose the Shoujo Doji name. But it gives us an extra attack. Um, yeah, that's not too bad, actually. So, whoops, we can go over here. We don't need the Shoujo name anymore, so we can go ahead and use this Soul Blast out. Uh, I think we still have it because it's a great one, but we can call out this Shoujo Doji here. There we go. And thanks to the Persona, he can actually hit. So let's go ahead and go into battle here uh, and push our five attacks that will hopefully seal the deal for us. Okay, there's the Emily that they checked last turn. And, um, hopefully. <laughs> they don't have too much left in that. I don't entirely remember their drive checks just now. Uh, let's do a 20 here. Bring it out a little bit more shield and then swing with the Vanguard. Or they could just take it as a miracle. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, let's just need to send a message really quickly. And they're just gonna take it, okay. Let's think, and we still had a bunch of attacks left. Um, I think this play was a lot better, especially my turn two was a really big um, explosive turn, and that's kind of the things you want to aim for. But typically, you know, the grind with the multi attacks and, you know, cycling unprecedented is um, not calling them out from bind and losing the name is also very important so try to sequence your plays really well and remember what's in bind and what effects are active at that time but in any case hope you guys enjoyed this video until next time take care of yourselves and each other play vanguard and have yourselves a damn good one